In this section of the course, we'll learn how to perform a retrospective review of your analytical system and how frequently this review should occur. We'll learn how to incorporate the use of total allowable error and total error plots into the review. Let's review what we've learned. A retrospective review should be performed once a quarter at a minimum. A review of the laboratory's chosen quality specifications should take place yearly. A minimum of 20 points over 20 days should be used to establish the mean and SD of a new lot. Alternatively, for the establishment of an SD for a new lot, the current lot's SD can be used if the test system is stable, the SD has been calculated from data collected over an extended period of time. The analytes for both lots have similar target values. An SD calculated from 20 points over 20 days can vary up to 30% from the actual SD. As a result, a more representative SD should be obtained from cumulative data over an extended period of time. As the 20 measurements used to calculate either the mean or SD is collected, possible day-to-day -day sources of variability should be included. To account for the vial-to-vial -vial variability of lyophilized controls, the 20 measurements should be derived from 20 different bottles of control. Proven methods for selecting appropriate SPC rules like Bayerad's Westgard Advisor program should always be used. If the compared test performance is better than the quality specification, single rules may be used. If test performance is at or near the quality specification, stricter rules and or multi-rule schemes may be needed. If test performance is worse than the quality specification, then procedural correction is needed. Quality specifications can be narrowed when there is no bias, no imprecision, a lot of white space on the TE plot. Widening of the quality specification should not be done when a test that has been performing within that specification suddenly exceeds it. When a TE plot has few process control rejections, and the rejections are all well within TEA limits, then the QC protocol is working effectively. Less stringent rules may be used. A single rule approach may be considered. When a TEA plot contains a lot of white space, the use of a higher level of performance for bias and imprecision may be used to establish the quality specification. The process control scheme is not appropriate when a TE plot has many unwarranted process control rejections. The mean and SD calculation and application may be inaccurate. Immediate corrective action is required when a TE plot shows relative bias, especially when minimum bias and minimum imprecision performance goals were used to establish the quality specification. Unrecognized or uncorrected relative bias can lead to proficiency testing failures. If minimum bias and minimum imprecision were used to establish the quality specification, immediate corrective action is required when a TE plot shows a wide dispersion. If minimum bias and minimum imprecision were used to establish the quality specification, immediate corrective action is required when a TE plot shows both relative bias and a wide dispersion. If a desirable or optimum bias and imprecision were used to establish the quality specification, corrective action should be taken but without the same kind of urgency. For all of your laboratory QC needs, 
go to www.qcnet.com.